Okay, so in this video we're going to be talking about the Tackle Frigate and how to use stuff. And this ship we have here is a Merlin. It's a Tackle Merlin and it's fit in such a way that once the fitting window opens, uh, we have a Warp Scrambler, a Web, an Afterburner, and some shield as well as a little bit of damage. But mostly our role in a fleet is to use our Scram and our Web to hold down an enemy ship so that they come and fight us, right? So. Well, actually, it's more so to hold it, hold down the enemy ship so our fleet can get there and fight them. Or if we aggress them on a, a a gate, we jump to the other side and stop them from trying to escape if they don't aggress back. So one of the things you always want to do is a tackle ship. And usually a tackle ship and a scout ship are usually the same role. Is they will end up going to, let's say, let's go to Tartokin, right? Usually on a, on a fleet... The scout will always go once, one system ahead, more or less. And they usually do this because they can get eyes, and also it doesn't alert everyone in that system that a fleet is rolling through. So that's why you usually have a FC say, everyone warp to the Tartokin gate, hold on the gate, tackle, jump through, scout ahead. That way, no one in that system knows that there's people in, you know, Anon in this case, about to jump into Tartokin. However, if they have eyes, like if they're a cloaky, perched above the gate or whatever in Nullsec, they'll know. Or if they have intel channels, like many Nullsec groups have, they'll know. Uh, so it's usually still a better practice to send one ship ahead. That way if there's a bunch of dudes on the other side, you only lose one ship rather than you lose the whole fleet. So let's imagine that this is the battlefield that we're on. We're going to turn on our tactical overlay so we see all the different stuff. And if you hadn't seen this before, it's this little button here. It's a tactical overlay. It lets you see the ranges of all your modules. So if I hover over my high slot modules, which are my neutron blasters, you see the circle. The outer circle is the, the maximum range. The inner circle is the optimized range. We do that for our scrams and we can do that for our web. Stuff like propulsion mods don't always work because you know they don't need that. So you don't need that. Uh, and I don't think it actually shows for passive, but anyway, that's that's a side thing. Uh, so we're gonna use always, we're always gonna have the tact uh, overlay because it's usually better to know the ranges that way you can see if there's a ship over so yeah 30 kilometers you can go well he's well outside my range I can't get him so I'm gonna start burning at him at that angle get the tackle tell everyone to warp to me and they'll warp to me uh, most tackle ships usually are on a watch list when you're doing a roam because it's easier to have them easily accessible on your watch list than have them tackle do all the work and then double you up because then you know, it's a little bit extra in the process for, for what they have to do as opposed to what you can do as a fleet commander is you just have them on your watch list and you warp the fleet to that guy when he says got him tackled. So that's one thing to worry about when you're a tackle ship and also as a scout ship. It's always make sure you're on the watch list, especially a Lodgy watch list. That way when the Lodgy land, they can help you out. They can start locking up as soon as they land and give you the reps that you badly need because tackle ships typically die, especially T1 tackle ships because, you know, they're weak, they're paper thin. Uh, but they have a really important role, and it's also a really good role to put a new player in. Uh, and a lot of examples throughout Eve's history show that new players and this simple tackle Merlin or a Rifter or whatever can do a lot of good for their fleet and still not really, and like, you know, they're not really comprehending what they've done. But if they can get that tackle or that web off, they can get, a, like, you know, a couple hundred million isk T3 st uh, strategic cruiser, and their fleet's really happy. and. In some cases, you'll be showered with this because you're an adorable newbie who just got an awesome kill. So when you're scouting, you always want to scout ahead. Uh, and you always go one system ahead. So you usually jump before the FC tells you uh, and the rest of the fleet to jump. You usually go up ahead by one system just because it's a good practice to have, like I said a little bit earlier. So in this system, we see we have three neutrals. None of them are friendly. So we tell the FC, Tartokin has three neutrals, no friendlies or, you know, just three neutrals, or sometimes you say three, you know, infidels or whatever. It's whatever, you know, term you want to call anyone who's not blue to you. Uh, and then you say there are stations. That means most likely these guys are docked up. Very, very likely that these guys are docked up, just by guessing, because we have one, two, three, four, we have five stations. So it's very likely that all three of them are docked up. Maybe one of them just left because, you know, whatever. Uh, and so then you then go, okay, next... You know, next uh, gate is Saranin, so we're going to warp to at zero. Uh, most of the time, you want to have pings, which are 
what we went over once before. I don't know if anyone saw it, but we'll go over it in this video as well. So a ping is basically anywhere that's around a gate or a celestial object, like a station or a planet, or mostly it's just gates and uh, stations, but you can have it around like pauses or whatever. Uh, it's something that's at least 150 kilometers away because 150 kilometers is the minimum distance you want to have or you can have between two objects to be able to activate your warp drive. So in this case, we're going to use our afterburner. We're going to burn a 150 km ping above the Saranen Gate in Tartokin. And typically, you can have it in either your court bookmarks, but sometimes it's good to have it in your personal bookmarks. That way, uh, you know, if there's an AWOX or anything like that, they can't warp to you or the rest of the fleet. Uh, and when you're in nullsec, you always want to use pings because there's usually bubbles on a gate, unless you're an interceptor. If you're an interceptor and you're scouting and you're doing tackle, you're just going to blast right through the bubbles. But if there are bubbles, you always want to tell your FC, bubbles on the gate, setting up a ping. That way the fleet can warp to you, and then they can warp down and bypass the bubble. So we are 36 kilometers away, but uh, with that, if anyone on Mumble wants to ask a question, go right ahead. Just know that you're going to be recorded and be in the end of video. So if anyone has any questions right now, shoot. All right, Boy. there you go. Now I hear you. Now you hear me. Yes, so you had a question. Yeah, I had a question. What is it? Okay. Um, is there any specific order in which you actually relay this information? Um, usually it's just on whatever you see or whatever the FC really wants to know. So uh, usually it's number of hostels and system, how many... Uh, you don't always need to tell the stations, but just say, like, you know, there's stations and system. So you don't need to tell the number of stations. Just so say, like, 15, you know, five hostels and station, five... Or, sorry, five, uh, you know, hostile enemies and system five stations. That's all you need to do. Or you just say they're stations. It doesn't matter the number. Because if there's a station, it's likely that they're docked up. Um, the other ideal is you have information such as the bubbles. You always want to tell that. Like, as soon as you see the bubbles, you say, bubbles on X gate. So, like, in this situation, bubbles on Saranen gate. Or bubbles on Anon gate. That sort of thing. Um, and we have our thing, so we're going to... Okay. Hit control B, we're going to set up our safe. So we're gonna do one f let's do 160 km Saranen top. So now we have this little bookmark. It's a personal bookmark because it doesn't have a little like star above it. Um, and also because I also set it to my personal bookmarks. But so now we have all that. So we can also warp down to the Saranen gate. So then if we set up that ping, warp fleet warps to the ping, we warp down, we jump through, fleet waits, warps down to the gate, they jump through. So we're gonna warp down. And we're going to jump through. And we just saw one or two people jump into local, which is kind of good, but not too worrying. So now that we're in Saranen, we go, okay, 47 in local. Uh, and then if you just do a quick scroll, you're like, ah, oh, they're mostly all, you just say mostly all friendly, and then you're good. Uh, you can also say how many are neutral. The problem with the local chat and something you always want to keep an eye on is the number in local chat in case local spikes which means a lot of people just jump into local uh, which usually indicates either a fleet or a gang rolling through uh, the problem with local chat is you can't filter by standings so we can't make it so all the neutrals are at the top and only the court members are at the bottom so there's that uh, the one thing we also want to keep in mind of is if we do a D scan, which most people should know how to use their D scan. If not, it's no problem. We do a D scan. We're using our overview, which means we're having all our PVP stuff. So we can control C this, right? And if I open up the PL or A dashboard or whatever uh, D scan tool there is, you can then relay that D scan information to your FC. So in this case, we're using the PL one, which is this link right here we then do a d scan max range we see all the stuff that's there right we can control c control v so we control c the all this stuff we just shift click top to bottom hit control c we then control v in we hit submit uh oh someone's attacking me it's no problem V and I. 
the one thing is you always want to keep an eye on this stuff. So people are always going to try to attack whatever. Who gives a shit? These dudes are trying to come shoot me. And BD. We could just jump through. And he's aggressive, so he can't use the uh, Stargate. And we got out, so no big deal. Anyway, let's go dock up real quick. So I can explain the D scan tool. So we control seed, we control V into here. And we see all the stuff in system. We can see what's on grid. Well, there was two Galente mining stations because we're using a setting that doesn't just show ships. Uh, if you're using the Sarashaw overview pack and you use ships only, it'll look a lot different. But if we use the normal PVP, it'll show stuff like gates, stations, that sort of thing. So anyway, D-Scan tool tells you the types of ships that are in uh, that system that's on your D-Scan range. So in this case, we saw a capsule, a cruiser, and a logistics ship, and they're all subcapitals. If there were capital ships, it would show a little bit lower. Uh, and it would also tell you anything about those. So like we picked up a T2 logistics ship and we also picked up a T1 logistics ship. Uh, this sort of stuff, you always want to just hit control C at the very top once you generate the link and then uh, hit control V in fleet. That way your FC can open it up, see what's there, and then they can determine, can we take this on? Do we have the people to take it on? What's likely to be the outcome? Uh, what's also useful to tell them also is I you know, was at X spot, did a D-scan, you know, they're within D-scan range of this position. Uh, and good tackles will also be able to use a uh, grid foo and D-scan foo, which basically lets them figure out where the fleet is and chase them down. Uh, that's a little bit more advanced, but as a just general roaming through low sec situation, that's something, you know, that basic understanding of how the D-scan tool works is really important to have. Uh, it's also good to check out uh, um, the different faction warfare complexes in LOSAC and faction warfare space, specifically faction warfare space, uh, that your entire fleet can fit in. So if like you're an all in Caracals or whatever, and you're in a Merlin, you can't get into certain faction warfare complexes because of the restriction sizes. I believe Merlins can only can go into all of them, but Caracals can only go into mediums or larges. I might be a bit wrong about the mediums. I know larges are fine. Uh, and so that's how you handle the D-Scan tool. Is there any other questions about how to do some of this stuff? Yes, this is Sasuke. I have another question. Sure, go ahead. Um, if there's uh, lots of stuff on the gate, for example, and you jump in, do you actually um, group ships? I mean, like you say, like there's 15 caracal, or you just say it's like 15 cruisers, about 20 frigates. Uh, you want to tell them the, the majority of the ships they have. So like, if there's a bunch of dudes, say like, uh, let's go back to the Anon Gate, right? Just for whatever reason. Anon Gate for fun. Right? Say we jump into Anon and there's like a fleet of 50 people. And you see all of them all just sitting on the gate. And your guys are on the other side. They're in Tartokin sitting on the Anon Gate. The guys are in Anon. The other fleet's in Anon sitting on the Tartokin Gate. Uh, what you do is you just do ship type, and then you just tell them, all right, there's about, you know, just do a quick number. Like, oh, there's probably about, like, there's about 10, 15 caracals, 15, or, like, 5 or 10 uh, scythes, just a bunch of tackle frigs. Tell them the majority of, tell them the, the closest number you can of the majority of their ships. That way the FC knows mostly what they need to worry about. If it's a lot of... Caracals, they know, all right, well, that's Caracals. That's good. We know that they're flying shield ships and they have shield logi. That means they're most likely flying size or scimitars. That's fine for us. We can take out, we can focus on those or their tackle ships while our, you know, size and scimitars try to defend themselves and defend us with their uh, logistics reps. So in this situation, say you see all the dudes here and you're like, oh shit, oh shit. You just do what I did to that Vexer. Uh, you just approach the gate, turn your AB on, and once you get within around, let's say, 20, I think it's believed, I believe it's uh, 2,500 uh, meters. You just right click jump, or if you say you get within like six or uh, 7,000 meters, you just hit jump and you'll automatically jump through. The nice thing about the mechanics of the game is because the way that Vexer did it, he aggressed me. I didn't aggress him, right? That means I could have jumped out anytime I wanted to, and I did. He couldn't follow me, meaning if they're all on the other side and they try to jump into us, you know, and they aggress our tackle frigate that gets the scout ahead, that means they're all aggressed, meaning they can't jump into our fleet. That means our fleet has to jump into them or wait for them to jump into us after their timer goes down. The one good thing you always want to do as a tackle frigate, and this is something you always want to do, say 
that same situation happened. We jumped into Anon. There's a bunch of dudes on Anon. They saw me. I, I burnt back for the gate, survived. They jumped back in. Our fleet's sitting on the Anon gate and Tartoken. Brawl or ups, right? The one thing you want to do as a tackle frig, and MCs will usually call this out, you usually want to get two, maybe three tackle guys in Anon on the Tartoken gate. So basically, cross jump uh, the enemy fleet that jumped into your fleet. That way, if they try to jump back into Anon, you can then catch any stragglers or people trying to run away as a tackle frig, and that way, they're doomed. That means even if they escape the fight or they're trying to leave the fight, your dudes can jump back in after a couple seconds, come save you, and that will uh, help you decimate their fleet a little bit more. Anyone have any other questions? Okay, I believe that's pretty much all the like the very basics of tackling and uh, uh, scouting. Scouting is fairly simple. It's just relaying the information you need to relay to your FC as you move along a path, right? So usually it's always going to be a frigate or an interceptor or something very fast and very and something that can hold down an enemy ship. Usually scouting and f tackling are more or less the same because they're faster ships. Don't need to worry about them as much as you do in your main fleet. Um, the one thing you also always want to be aware of is that when it comes to to scouting and tackling, uh, it's just it's very much a learn as you go sort of thing. Kind of like being a good dictator pilot, you, you're best off just learning as you're doing it. So ideally, uh, you just want to do it as much as possible because our tackle merlins are only 2.5 million you can lose them and pretty much recoup the cost pretty quickly. Uh, so that does it for this lecture on tackles and frigates. Uh, and if anyone has any questions, always post on the forums, post in anywhere you can find it, like New Beans chat channel or anything like that, and we will help you out. Skill training completed. <laughs>